Guys, I'm, I'm Eric. Um, pleasure to be here. It's exciting to see everybody out tonight, so thanks for coming. I hope that I'm not one of the main events, I guess. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Xylo. Um, what I'd like to kind of do uh, before I talk about our business is um, talk a little bit about the subscription economy that we all live in right now. And uh, so you kind of look at all these logos, right? Like um, when I look at my credit card um, at home, a lot of these generally pop up. And some of them I know about, but a lot of them sometimes I don't or I forget about them. You know, maybe um, like, you know, one example is I'm a huge Spotify fan, but like I signed up for this 90 day free trial of Apple, Apple Music because it's going to be awesome. And then all of a sudden, you know, it, I'm paying for it or something. So it's kind of crazy. So anyways, all these subscriptions and even my two year old knows how to use Spotify. So that's that's kind of uh, been kind of you know, kind of crazy. So in, in our personal lives, right, we manage lots of subscriptions. There's a subscription for everything, you know, even for pet food and gyms and, you know, things like that. So in the business context, so our, our company, Zylo, is actually catered towards enterprises and, and uh, big companies. So sorry if I'm standing in front of our slides here. Um, and um, for just a real quick history lesson within software, not that long ago, there was this time before Salesforce and Exact Target and companies like that where all software was purchased through, through IT. You know, if you wanted to buy something, you went and asked IT for it, and then they would help you know, set it up. Um, and then what's happened over the last uh, 10, 10, probably 15, 10, 15 years, um, software subscriptions now are the standard, right? It's SaaS, cloud subscription. Everything that's purchased in companies is um, generally a, a software as a service now. And uh, in, 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 each, uh, in a company, IT might see just a little bit of these, of these uh, applications being brought in. Uh, sales will buy several sales, uh, sales applications. Marketing will buy several applications. You know, so it's, this kind of universe is kind of crazy. And actually, like, you, have you guys all seen this marketing la landscape, which is kind of a you know, good example? Um, and hopefully, some, some of us are probably you know, in, in here. Um, and then you've got even like the HR, Marketing Tech Cloud, like you know, Amman over here is you know, building you know, a bunch of applications in HR. I'm just kind of joking. But it's, you know, there's ton tons of different uh, categories of software. Um, so we, at Zylo, what we're doing for companies is we're taking this, this really complex environment of software coming into organizations and putting it all into one uh, place, one system of record, so that uh, you can really understand what you have um, and how to maximize your, uh, your investments. I mean, now, you know, technology is actually one of the biggest uh, kind of critical investments you can make for employees to do their jobs now, uh, so it's really important. Um, just a real quick um, slide on our customers, and I think you know there's several Zylo folks out here, so I think we're we're all proud to showcase who our customers are. Um, when we started the business, we actually didn't know who who this would be right for. We um, we thought about startups could use this. We thought about enterprises could could use this. The one thing we did learn is that um, the the larger the company, the the larger the issue is. And so uh, we're an enterprise-focused company. We generally target companies that are 1,000 employees or more. Um, and and our, our, our customers include companies like Zendesk or Uber that are cloud-first, that buy a lot of technology. Um, but even, um, you know, it's kind of interesting if anyone's with Lilly uh, here tonight, they're one of our largest customers um, by a few different measures. But uh, what's interesting is, you know, a company like that that's been around for a while, they, they are one of the most innovative companies, actually, with the types of SaaS products they use. Um, and so they actually use Zylo to help manage, manage um, you know, kind of visibility and understanding of it. So just a real quick highlight of what we do as a business. Um, so uh, real quick, we, we kind of go through these four kind of areas, which is kind of a value curve. One is we help discover applications. Um, we integrate into systems and find everything that's purchased in an organization at a high level. Um, and we generally find that it's two to three times what a company will expect uh, that they have, uh, which is pretty fascinating. Um, so we, we kind of under, you know, give them that understanding. Um, and then usually a company, ask, we'll ask them, like, how do you manage your renewals? Like, you know, how many? And so um, in, in Zylo, um, over our, cust our average customer has over 400 cloud subscriptions in their business that they renew every year. 400. And so uh, and they do that on spreadsheets, right? It's like, imagine, like, managing your sales, you know, not on Salesforce or HubSpot or something like that, right? So, um, you know, so we, we help bring that all in this kind of one system of record. Um, Utilization measurement is kind of the next area. So like once we kind of figure out and kind of pull, put all this in one place, 
Then you have these, these, um, these applications. We integrate into Salesforce and Google and Microsoft and several other applications, and you can start to measure usage. So you can really understand what you're paying for uh, is what you're actually using. And that's the whole vision of what I think what, what SaaS is all about. We actually, as a business, think about the opportunity uh, to help even SaaS providers maximize usage and sell more products. And so, you know, kind of the vision would be you pay for what you use. It's something we're really trying to revolutionize with customers. And then over time, it's just really all about user optimization. Uh, so, you know, if, you're, if, if, if we're really trying to help make sure that every employee that, that's in a company has the right tools. And so over time, uh, you know, kind of bringing in this data allows that to happen. Um, one thing I'll just kind of highlight real quick is um, we've, we've built over the last year, uh, we raised a round of capital, as Matt was kind of talking about fundraising. We raised three million last year, and we poured that into engineering and product in a big way. Um, we've built a, um, a data matching model, so it's, it's, it's going to allow us to, you know, what we think to win a category. There's actually a dozen or so companies around the country doing what we're doing, um, and we're far ahead. And uh, part of that's our data matching model that our product and engineering team have built. Um, and it's, uh, it allows us to um, quickly discover applications so that you can get it kind of right out of the gate when you implement the product, which is, uh, which is a really key differentiator. Um, the other kind of thing that we, we're helping doing is we um, are, and it's a big vision of ours, is helping with recommendations of product selection. There's a lot of companies that are out in the, the kind of the world that help with like reviews and things like that. We actually partner with G2 Crowd, which is a great partner of ours. Um, what we're setting out to do is build the largest set of data, of actual usage data and kind of adoption of products. Um, and then provide recommendations uh, to the products that you're, uh, that you're using. Um, so based on a lot of the data, we actually know now with our customers which, cus which products are being renewed, which ones are being adopted, and things like that. And so we're going to help organizations make better selections, which are going to be both you know, great for the customer, but also sellers that are selling an organization to have that, that data. Um, so um, I'm going to you know, really quickly kind of like uh, wrap this up, but um, you know, we're, we're essentially taking this environment of a, a complex universe of products, and this is just marketing, but um, you know, it's interesting. HR is actually one of the fastest growing areas. Uh, finance uh, is, is a huge area. So each category um, you know, is just a really big challenge for organizations, and we're, um, we're bringing it all into one you know, simple-to-use platform so they can understand. Um, and one thing I'll kind of you know, maybe point out too, I think several of you in the room are uh, probably SaaS entrepreneurs or work for SaaS companies. Um, as much as we talk about um, you know, the, the idea of finding optimization around, you know, paying for what you're using and things like that, a big part of our charter long term is to be a champion of SaaS. And so we find it, we want to find as a many, many opportunities to help drive adoption versus reducing it or reducing licenses and things like that. So that's kind of a big, big, big tenant of ours. So, um, so thank you. Um, and if, if the Zylo folks are out there, I told you I was going to do this. Zylo. Zylo, 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 Zylo. <laughs> nice job, man. Nice. That chant wasn't culty at all. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a little—I was so nervous uh, earlier that I was actually like just freaking out. I was like, "We'll just do that. Like, I'll just like totally change the game. Just come up and." But, I, don't know. I love it, man. At, at the end, you were nervous. Like, you played it cool. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't, didn't 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 pick up on it at all. No, it was great. Um, Becky, would you kick us off with uh, questions this time? Yeah, I mean, massive congratulations on the three mil. I think that's really really exciting. Thanks. Um, I'm interested to know sort of how and why you've had the traction that you've had to date, and wh how, what your focus is on accelerating that traction from now. Now, now that you've got the product and you and you've been working on the engineering side. Yeah, great question. Um, so we started with cloud first companies, uh, you know, so thinking about finding that right set of companies that's a little bit above a startup size, but you know, it's like Uber and Zendesk are like really good examples, you know, thousand or more employees growing fast. Um, and so we kind of built to, to try to accelerate really in our first kind of part was like who, who gets the problem, um, you know, who would experience it. And those were the most, you know, kind of made the most sense. Um, as we're kind of thinking about acceleration, um, you know, it's really about adopting the most, uh, the, the largest number of apps and spend that we can get is really what's going to differentiate us to build a, uh, artificial intelligent recommendations and things like that. So if you really think about it, like for us now, it's like how do we build a team that's built to bring on uh, not only the Ubers and the Zendesk of the world at a decent velocity, but also when, uh, you know, folks like Anthem and GE and, you know, companies like that where they have um, half a million or half a billion dollars in annual spend in cloud subscriptions. So for us, we're building a team to 
kind of wrap around that opportunity is how we're, we're scaling. So we're very enterprise focused. Uh, so first of all, very real pain. Uh, we find this all the time where, you know, whoever bought the subscription left the company and nobody's using it anymore. Like three of us bought a subscription to the same freaking service. Yeah. Uh, it, very real pain. It's awesome that you're doing that. Um, my, my one concern might be, um, you know, usually when you're selling to, especially like the enterprise space, you've got to have the ability to grow the value of that account over time because it's sort of like a, a set pond lake that, that you're going to be able to fish from. Um, but your value proposition is sort of, you're going to be able to discover an infinite amount of waste, right? Normally you would do like feature functionality as one access and then like usage as the other. So what do you think in terms of like pricing, monetization, and then like how you're going to be able to like sort of land and expand the accounts and make them grow? Yeah, that's a great question. We, um, we, we, we talk about this value cliff, you know, like if you're, if we're coming in and talking about cost savings, um, that you know that you're going to get this real opportunity for cost savings, like right out of the gate. The challenge, the challenge with uh, cloud subscriptions in general, is that when we go in and find that visibility of everything that's there, um, it's it's really difficult um, to make. Uh, I guess I guess number one, like just j to deliver cost savings, like right out of the gate, because um, sometimes th that you have to really understand the the kind of the dynamics of each application, because some are actually by design. The contracts are set up in a way that necessarily aren't about, you know, the number of seats that are not being used, and you know, there's like things like that. But, um, uh, but it's it's really about optimization in the sense of like going forward. You've you've got this 12 month, uh, like, we'll, so we'll find everything. We'll have now a 12 or even sometimes two to three year roadmap of all the renewals and everything that goes into it. And um, as much as spend is an important measure, and it's the easy one to kind of focus on, it's really about like how do those products work together. How are you thinking about if your company is going to grow, let's say 500 employees, what tools are you going to select and that sort of thing? So a lot of the conversations we're driving to are kind of taking the spend and utilization data and move away from cost savings, but more about like how are you strategically thinking about buying products and, you know, and things like that. So the pressure on our business, um, you know, and we're, in, we're midway in building it, and I think we lose the game if we only focus on cost savings, is we have to find the the features that will allow for growth of SaaS applications and kind of the right setup. So what we, what we want to do is not have, uh, we totally believe that just like I think any SaaS CEO would say is like, if someone's not using my product, I don't want you to use it. I mean, if at the end of the day, that's just the reality. Like we should drive adoption. And so, and so our kind of focus on that is, is, you know, we're laser focused on that. And then the functionality has to deliver on that result. It's kind of, you know, we're focused. So move away from cost savings and, if you plug HubSpot into this and you find somebody who's not using it, just shoot me an email. All right. All right. <laughs> let's let's have us talk to them before you tell yeah. them about that, okay? Perfect. And, well, and, and it's funny. And, and on, that, on that example is that we think that uh, companies like HubSpot, especially larger companies, can actually be on the right side of kind of time where we can actually, you know, we want HubSpot and Salesforce and everyone to look at the idea that we can help drive transparency. And in fact, if we, if we uncover lack of use and adoption early in, in, earlier in the contract, we're actually going to be a great friend, you know, of uh, Salesforce. So that's, that's kind of the, you know, the, the where we're driving for. Angie? So I love the idea. Just last week, I got charged for an auto subscription that no one's using anymore. Yep. But we're an 80-person company. Uh, obviously, we don't fit your enterprise model right now. Yeah. Um, do you have plans in the future to offer a similar product to small and medium-sized businesses, and how would that how would that work? Yes. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we 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 would love to. The challenge um, with what we're building, and and there's I mentioned there's lots of competition, so we're kind of at this like race of building a category, and we think we're the leader. Um, but uh, in order to build out the automation that would support a company um, and have really you know good data. Um, and for us to grow a business, we have to start with the enterprise and then take that functionality and bring it to, uh, to a price point that can work. So for us, we actually had to start out the business. Corey's probably out there and Ben and Ryan. And, um, and you know, we, when we started the, um, uh, you know, the company, a lot of it was like service intensive. We had to like understand what was happening and things like that. So we actually had to you know, kind of focus on solving the problem and understanding what the problems were solving and all of that and then kind of automate it. So, um, I would say by the end of next year, um, you'll probably be able to go to our website and do a free trial and sign up as a company that's, you know, five employees or 80 employees and we'll have a great product for you. I love it. Thank you so much, Eric. You did an awesome job. Let's Thanks. give it up for Eric at Xylo. Thanks, guys. Good job. Thanks. Thanks a lot.
All right. That wraps.